For millions of years, the African continent was a gigantic island. This isolation allowed certain mammals to evolve independently from other animals worldwide. A similar phenomenon occurred in South America, where unique ungulates developed, displaying evolutionary convergences with animals to which they had no direct relation. Afrotherians also underwent convergent evolutions with some animals from other parts of the world. They comprise the group that includes the largest terrestrial mammals on this planet, with a unique evolutionary trajectory and resemblances to their phylogenetically closest cousins that are not readily apparent. Elephant shrew is one of the fastest small mammals, having been recorded to reach speeds of 29 km per hour. Compared to other mammalian insectivores, Sengis have relatively large brains. They are solitary animals which means that they rely on a combination of vocalizations and scent markings for communication with their vocalizations, which serves the purposes such as territory defense and mate attraction. They are small, quadrupedal, insectivorous mammals resembling rodents or possums, with scaly tails, long snouts, and legs quite long for their size, which are used to move from one place to another like rabbits. At one time, the Chrysochloridae were regarded as primitive. Supporting arguments of this included that they were thought to have originated in Gondwana, that they had a low resting metabolic rate, and that they could switch off thermoregulation when inactive. Like the Tenrex, they possess a cloaca, and males lack a scrotum. However, these points are no longer regarded as strongly suggestive of golden moles as undeveloped reptilian mammals. Some are seen rather as adaptations to regional climatic conditions. Going into a torpor when resting or during cold weather enables them to conserve energy and reduce urgent requirements for food. Similarly, they have developed particularly efficient kidneys, and most species do not need to drink water at all, in fact, they tend to drown easily if they fall into water. In contrast to many other golden moles, Grant's golden mole rarely builds lasting tunnels. It swims through the sand just under or on the surface while searching for food. It is mainly a nocturnal animal, resting by day in small caves beneath sheltering plants. When foraging at night, the animal will alternate between moving over the surface sand, dipping its head into the substrate and swimming through the sand. Studies show that tenrex and golden moles should be separated from insectivora and placed in afrotheria which include the elephant shrews and hyraxes. They share few morphological synapomorphies. Nuclear gene sequences and rare genomic changes demonstrated that chrysochlorids and tenrex form their own clade, Afrosauricida. Divergence between golden moles and tenrex occurred about 50 million years ago. They are now classified as Chrysochloridia instead of a specialized member of order Insectivora. Most golden mole species are restricted to a narrow range of habitats and environmental conditions. They have very limited mobility and dispersal abilities. They are specialized case-elected strategists, opportunistic insectivores. Lowland streaked tenrec has hard keratinous quills located in the mid-dorsal region that act as a sounding device and are thought to be used for communication between mother and young and a warning signal to predators. Movement of these quills causes the tips to rub together and create a high-frequency sound. It is the only mammal known to use stridulation for generating sound, a method more commonly associated with insects and snakes. Due to its rarity, there is not sufficient information regarding the functional morphological mechanism of the streaked tenrec. The sounding quills are different from the spines and hair and are found in the mid-dorsal region of the streaked tenrec. The arrangement and length are similar throughout the streaked tenrec's lifespan, making up three rows in its midline area and adjacent areas bilaterally. The large-eared tenrec has a low metabolic rate and is heterothermic. This means that its body temperature fluctuates with the surrounding environment, although pregnant and lactating females may maintain a more steady, higher temperature. The animals are often torpid in the heat of the day, 
hiding in concealed locations such as hollow logs or holes. It feeds on insects, particularly termites which it locates by sound. The population trend is unknown and although this tenrec has been recorded in various scattered areas of Madagascar, it is a small, inconspicuous animal and is likely to also be present in intervening locations. Tenrex are believed to have evolved from a single species that colonized Madagascar between 42 and 25 million years ago. The question of how this family reached Madagascar is still unresolved, but the leading hypothesis suggests a small number of individuals may have found themselves on floating vegetation and crossed the Mozambique Channel which separates Madagascar from southeastern Africa. The Tenracidae family is one of only four extant terrestrial mammal lineages to have colonized and diversified on Madagascar. The tailless tenrec is the largest species of the tenrec family, it is 26 to 40 centimeters in length and weighs up to 2 kilograms. The animal is omnivorous and, unlike the herbivorous rodents for which it is often mistaken, possesses small, needle-like sharp teeth for a diet of larger invertebrates and small vertebrates, as well as fruits and leaves. If threatened, this tenrec will scream, erect its spiny hairs to a crest, jump, buck and bite. It shelters in a nest of grass and leaves under a rock, log or bush by day. It gives birth to a litter of as many as 32 young, with an average litter between 15 and 20 after a gestation of 50 to 60 days. The tailless tenrec was the first tropical mammal observed to hibernate, for long stretches of time without waking periods, up to nine months at a time. As burrowing mammals with porcine snouts, aardvarks are true to their name, which translates to earth pig in the Afrikaans language. The nocturnal animals use their long noses and keen sense of smell to sniff out ants and termites, which they lap up with an anteater-like tongue covered in sticky saliva. These insects make up most of the aardvark's diet, although they'll occasionally eat beetle larvae. Aardvarks use their long, powerful claws to tear open termite mounds, as well as dig underground burrows in which they sleep and care for their young. They have stocky bodies, pinkish-gray or grayish-brown skin, and a short tail. To thrive in their sub-Saharan habitat, the insectivores sport large, rabbity ears that disperse heat, sparse body hair, and thick skin that's impervious to insect bites. People rarely see aardvarks, mostly because they're solitary, nocturnal, and spend so much time underground. They also lack the reflective tissue that makes the eyes of some animals glow in the dark. In Africa during the Eocene and Oligocene, the main terrestrial herbivores were a different type of mammal entirely, hyraxes. Although their only modern representatives are small climbing rodent-like animals, hyraxes were once a much more diverse and widespread group, filling a variety of ecological niches and ranging from the size of rats up to the size of rhinos. Antilohyrax was a mid-sized example of these diverse hyraxes, standing about 50 centimeters tall at the shoulder. It had a deer-like snout and long slender limbs adapted for running and leaping, with leg bones incredibly similar in size and proportion to modern springbok. Kvababirax were distinguished by their large size, the length of their massive bodies reached 1.5 meters their eye sockets were small, considerably protruding over the temple and looking sideways, and at the same time set out far beyond the skull. Judging by the relatively short and very high nasal bones, as well as by the large nasal incisure, notably stretching backwards, it could have a small proboscis. Possibly, the noted original combination of characteristics of Kvababirax points to its adaptation to river and lakes habitat, among swampy brushwood of forest thickets. Its protruding eye sockets over the temple, resembling that of hippopotamus, indicates its ability to hide underwater. Probably, in water it searched for shelter in moments of danger. Western tree hyraxes tend to be solitary, 
and only occasionally are found in groups of two or three. They are nocturnal and generally feed at night. It has been noted that this species is an especially adept climber. Common predators of the western tree hyrax are eagles, leopards, hawks, servals, pythons, and golden cats, in addition to occasionally being hunted by humans for food. In Basso, Guinea, one notable ecological association with chimpanzees occurs. A chimpanzee at Basso was observed capturing a western tree hyrax, carrying it to her nest, and sleeping with and grooming it. This suggests that chimpanzees in Basso may not regard hyraxes as a prey animal. Hyraxes retain or have redeveloped a number of primitive mammalian characteristics, in particular, they have poorly developed internal temperature regulation, for which they compensate by behavioral thermoregulation, such as huddling together and basking in the sun. Male hyraxes lack a scrotum and their testicles remain tucked up in their abdominal cavity next to the kidneys, as do those of elephants and manatees. They are sometimes described as being the closest living relative of the elephant, although whether this is so is disputed. Recent morphological and molecular-based classifications reveal the Cyrenians to be the closest living relatives of elephants. While they are diurnal, 95% of the day is spent resting, sun basking in the morning and evening, but avoiding the midday heat. While sun basking is necessary for thermoregulation, it greatly increases their risk of predation. Rock hyraxes build dwelling holes in any type of rock with suitable cavities, such as sedimentary rocks and soil. In Mount Kenya, rock hyraxes live in colonies comprising an adult male, several adult females and immatures. They are active during the day, and sometimes during moonlit nights. The dominant male defends and watches over the group. The male also marks his territory. They forage for food up to about 50 meters from their refuge, usually feeding as a group and with one or more acting as sentries from a prominent lookout position. On the approach of danger, the sentries give an alarm call, and the animals quickly retreat to their refuge. Male hyraxes have been categorized into four classes, territorial, peripheral, early dispersers, and late dispersers. The territorial males are dominant. Peripheral males are more solitary and sometimes take over a group when the dominant male is missing. Early dispersing males are juveniles that leave the birth site around 16 to 24 months of age. Late dispersers are also juvenile males, but they leave the birth site much later, around 30 or more months of age. Arsinoetherium fossils were first found in the Fayum area of Egypt, and to date these fossils are the best preserved with some specimens being almost complete. They were large quadrupedal herbivores that are immediately identifiable from the two extremely large horns that protrude from the top of the skull. It is thought that these two horns were sexually selected characteristics which are most greatly developed in the males, and would have been used primarily for display, and possibly even combat between competing individuals. A second pair of much smaller horns also grew from the posterior base of the larger horns. A thuff it is tempting to state that Arsinoetherium was rhinoceros-like, the legs and hips have both been noted to actually be more elephant-like. It is thought to have been a selective browser of shrubs as opposed to a grazer, a plausible scenario given that the vast grassy plains of the Cenozoic did not begin to take hold fully until the Miocene and after Arsinoetherium went extinct. It may even be that the continuing shift from forests to grass plains may have been one of the contributing factors to their demise. Although commonly known as sea cows due to their herbivorous grazing habits, Cyrenians' closest living relatives are actually modern elephants. They're thought to have originated in Africa over 50 million years ago, starting off as pig-like or hippo-like semi-aquatic animals, but they must have been good swimmers capable of crossing oceans very early in their evolutionary history, 
since some of the earliest known Cyrenean fossils actually come from the other side of the Atlantic on the Caribbean island of Jamaica. The remains of Pezosiren indicate that while it had four limbs adapted to walking on land, the skull, teeth, and heavy ribs are more typical of modern Cyrenians. While modern Cyrenians are fully aquatic, the 1.5 meters Perastomus was predominantly terrestrial, judging from the structure of its skull. Judging from its crown-shaped molars and the shape of its snout, it fed on soft plants. The snout is long, narrow, and, at the tip, bulbous. The nasal bones are larger than other Cyrenians. The nasal ridge is well developed, indicating it had a good sense of smell. The frontal bones are smaller than usual for Cyrenians, though, as in other Cyrenians, it had a pronounced brow ridge. Since Pezosiren has a sagittal crest, it is possible the Prorastomus specimen had one too before being eroded away. Sobrarbus iron extends some of our knowledge of early four-legged Cyrenians to Europe. Hundreds of bones were found in northeastern Spain, representing at least six different individuals and giving us a fairly complete idea of this species' anatomy. It was smaller than modern sea cows, reaching about two meters long, and seems to represent a transitional point between the semi-aquatic ancestral Cyrenians and fully aquatic later forms. It had a head very similar to its modern relatives, and probably a tail fin, but also still retained small functional hind limbs. It was initially thought to still be somewhat semi-aquatic and capable of quadrupedal locomotion on land, but a later analysis of its hind limb bone suggests that it may actually have been much more aquatic than that. Its hind legs had a wide range of motion and were probably used for otter-like swimming, undulating the body while paddling but might not have been capable of supporting its weight on land. So if Sobrarbus iron did still haul out of the water, it may have had to move more like a seal. The teeth of Eotheroids were relatively unspecialized compared to those of extant Cyrenians, which are reduced as an adaptation for feeding on sea grass. The upper molars of the species Lambendrano are considerably longer and wider than those of Egyptiacum, suggesting that they were less specialized. Eotheroids is likely to have been one of the first fully aquatic sea cows. It was found in association with the remains of other sea cows, crocodilians and sea turtles, which suggests that the locality is representative of a coastal or estuarine environment. The dugong is the only Cyrenian in its range, which spans the waters of the Indo-West Pacific. It is largely dependent on seagrass communities for subsistence and is thus restricted to the coastal habitats that support seagrass meadows, with the largest dugong concentrations typically occurring in wide, shallow, protected areas. Like all modern Cyrenians, it has a fusiform body with no dorsal fin or hind limbs. The forelimbs or flippers are paddle-like. The dugong is easily distinguished from the manatees by its fluked, dolphin-like tail, but also possesses a unique skull and teeth. Its snout is sharply downturned, an adaptation for feeding in benthic seagrass communities. The molar teeth are simple and peg-like, unlike the more elaborate molar dentition of manatees. The dugong has been hunted for thousands of years for its meat and oil. Traditional hunting still has great cultural significance in several countries in its modern range. The dugong's current distribution is fragmented, and many populations are believed to be close to extinction. Despite being legally protected in many countries, the main causes of population decline remain anthropogenic and include fishing-related fatalities, habitat degradation, and hunting. With its long lifespan of 70 years or more and slow rate of reproduction, the dugong is especially vulnerable to extinction. Steller sea cow is an extinct Cyrenian described by George Wilhelm Steller in 1741. At that time, it was found only around the Commander Islands in the Bering Sea, its range extended across the North Pacific during the Pleistocene epoch, and likely contracted to such an extreme degree due to the glacial cycle. It is possible indigenous populations interacted with the animal before Europeans. 
Stellar first encountered it on Vitus Bering's Great Northern Expedition when the crew became shipwrecked on Bering Island. Within 27 years of its discovery by Europeans, the slow-moving and easily caught mammal was hunted into extinction for its meat, fat and hide. Some adults would have reached weights of 8 to 10 tons and lengths up to 9 meters it had a thicker layer of blubber than other members of the order, an adaptation to the cold waters of its environment. Its tail was forked, like that of whales or dugongs. Lacking true teeth, it had an array of white bristles on its upper lip and two keratinous plates within its mouth for chewing. It fed mainly on kelp, and communicated with sighs and snorting sounds. Stellar believed it was a monogamous and social animal living in small family groups and raising its young, similar to modern Cyrenians. Because manatees evolved in habitats without natural predators, they lack predator avoidance behavior. The large size and low metabolic rates of manatees lends to their capacity for long and deep dives, as well as their relative lack of speed. Manatees are frequently solitary creatures, but they do aggregate at warm water habitats during the winter and during the formation of breeding herds. In spite of their docile demeanor, due to their large size the West Indian manatee has nearly no natural predators in its native environment. American alligators have been suspected to on occasion take a manatee. Manatees are obligate herbivores that feed on over 60 species of aquatic plants in both fresh and salt water. Seagrass is a staple of the manatee diet, particularly in coastal areas. Manatees are non-ruminants with an enlarged hindgut. Unlike other hindgut fermenters, such as the horse, manatees efficiently extract nutrients, particularly cellulose, from the aquatic plants in their diet. Manatees have a large gastrointestinal tract with contents measuring about 23% of its total body mass. In addition, the passage rate of food is very long. This slow process increases the digestibility of their diet. Manatees have sensitive tactile hairs that cover their bodies and faces called whiskers or vibrissae. Each individual hair is a vibrissal apparatus called a follicle sinus complex. Vibrissae are blood-filled sinuses bound by a dense connective tissue capsule with sensitive nerve endings that provides haptic feedback to the manatee. The Amazonian manatee is the only Cyrenian that lives exclusively in freshwater habitat. The species relies on changes in the peripheral circulation for its primary mechanism for thermoregulation by using sphincters to deflect blood flow from areas of the body in close contact with water. They also rely on subcutaneous fat to reduce heat loss. Manatees have nostrils, not blowholes like other aquatic mammals, which close when underwater to keep water out and open when above water to breathe. Although manatees can remain underwater for extended periods, surfacing for air about every five minutes is common. The longest documented submergence of an Amazonian manatee in captivity is 14 minutes.